Hey everybody, hope you're doing well today. So in this video, we're going to be discussing Orchestral Tools newest library called the Berlin Orchestra Inspire 2. And as you can see right here in the left hand side, uh, they've already released um, Inspire 1, which is basically an all rounder library um, taking parts from their Berlin series and then, um, you know, encapsulating that all into one package for, you know, standard orchestral music or epic music. Inspire 2 is a little more specific, however, and it dives into more of the emotional and atmospheric type of, uh, of scoring. So what I thought we'd do is we can kind of explore the folders that we get and then the instruments inside. So let's start right away with the multis. And you can see here, they have the orchestrations and they also have the sections. Um, so sorry, just before we start, let me just mention that uh, the Inspire series are basically taken from the Berlin series plus the Metropolis Arc series. These are not new samples that are recorded, but they're basically existing samples that are arranged into ensembles and different um, presets, if you will, of uh, instrumentation that basically helps you to sketch really easily and quickly without having to load too many patches. So um, let's quickly start with orchestrations. And you can see here they have the low woodwinds multi, but also the low brass um, him, himium multi as well. Um, so let's just quickly drag in the low woodwinds. And let's hear what this sounds like. Okay, the lot of vibrato there, it's really, really nice. Um, the thing I love the most about Orchestral Tools libraries is, and I've mentioned this before, but the sound quality and the detail in the sound is actually really, really pristine. And you can hear everything that's going on. Um, so I would pretty much describe it as a very transparent sound. Uh, but in addition to that, the room that it was recorded in, the Teldex Studio, sounds amazing. Um, and so we don't get a tail that's way too long or way too short. In my opinion, it's just right. And so I, I usually leave on the mic positions by default when I'm scoring and I'm composing. So this is what the staccato sounds like. Awesome. Now the low brass are as it says low brass, but uh, it's more of a soft type of brass. Let's see. So just a moment ago, I had the mod wheel all the way up, and this is the max volume that they come with. So it's a very mellow, atmospheric, um, pad-like sound almost. Staccatos. You know? So it's nothing too brassy, it's, it's all kind of under the surface here. And then here we have the flotando in the strings, and by the way, I've gone into the sections folder now. So in the strings we have the whole ensemble, we have high strings and low strings. So for this review, let's just um, talk about the high strings. So, and Fultando is essentially just playing closer to the fingerboard, which results in more of an airy sound and more of an open uh, timbre. And so it's not as stringy and not as passionate, you could say, as um, regular string bowing. So. Right, so a really, really nice quality. And then the uh, portados. I really like that it kind of swells in a little bit. So it, it's not too jarring and it kind of allows you to, to seep into the, the music instead of it being like a really heavy attack. 
So just a little disclaimer here, um, you'll hear some pops and clicks in the performance as well. I play this instrument and other instruments as well, but it's really just my CPU that's causing these spikes here um, because my system isn't that strong. It's uh, just eight gigabytes of RAM and um, it's quite an old CPU now from 2012. So if you hear any pops and clicks, it's from the, the C CPU itself and not from the library. The library is actually known to be quite lightweight and um, easy to carry around, you know? So um, excuse any pops and clicks, I apologize for that. And this is the solo oboe, this is the legato. The soft dynamic layer is really, really pretty. The upper one isn't as loud or isn't as aggressive or bold as I think it could be. But again, that I think that falls into the, uh, the aim of what this library is going for, more of a soft tone. So again, just a nice peaceful sound. And then we have a bassoon as well. Solo bassoon. And notice the samples are quite wet as well, so. I love the natural vibrato in the performances there. Really, really pretty. Um, we have horn ensemble multi. Let's see what this sounds like. Just a beautiful tail there. You really have no need for an external reverb there unless you, you're going for that extra long um, reverb. I find, I find myself wanting an extra note or two at the top range here. Um, again, I, I know it's the aim of the library to go a little bit softer and a little more atmospheric. So naturally when the horns uh, go for the higher notes, they have to blow more air and exert a little more effort. So that's probably why they limited the range to um, the D here, the high D. So you can actually extend the range here. Um, so you can see that right now my highest note is the D4. But if I actually click on this D4 and extend it and pull it up, you see the white, uh, sorry, the yellow notes here showing up on the bottom here, you can go up. And sorry, those pops and clicks again are just from the, um, from my CPU, not from the library itself. Let's see how high we can actually go. So we can go all the way up to D5. So that's actually quite high. And um, this manipulation of the audio allows you to play those melodic expressive lines that you're really going for. So that's the high part. But uh, let's check out the lower notes. So there's plenty of throatiness and brassiness to these samples here in the horn ensemble. Keep in mind, it is different from the um, Hemium patch, which is completely soft. It's almost as if there was a, um, a low pass filter there and they literally just cut off all the highs and just let in the warmth of the lows come through. Um, for this horn ensemble, they, they uh, got the lowest and the softest timbre to kind of a nice throaty raspy sound as well. So this is a very um, all rounded patch, I would say. Very good all purpose type of instrument okay and then the staccatos are a little shorter cool all right let's move on to some percussions so got some taiko drums let's see what these sound like
So I like that it goes higher and higher and that starts off nice, full and meaty. So you could do some nice patterns with these. You know, something not as stupid as what I just did, but. So just a really nice sound overall. And the harp ensemble I really like as well, because not only do they have the um, chromatic patches, so where you can just play each of the notes, but they also have these um, fifth chords descending. So that sounds really, really realistic, these um, performed in uh, samples. But um, this general all-purpose patch All right, that's really, really sounds really really nice. Cool. Let's move on to the single a little bit, and the highlights here are the violins and the children's choir. So let's just hear what that sounds like. I mean, that's just beautiful. That's like instant fantasy right there, you know. Now, if you do have the Berlin series, like if you have the strings, um, if you also have the Metropolis Arc series, like Metropolis Arc 2, that actually comes with the children's choir already. So here you see choir, it comes with children's women and um, men. This one puts the children's choir and uh, high violins together. So you could do that yourself, but uh, this gives you a really great starting point if you don't have the means to purchase the individual uh, Berlin libraries or the Machala Cirque ones. It's a really good starting point. Um, all right, let's, we went over that. I wanna talk about the solo strings for a little bit. So we have the solo violin and the solo cello. These do sound quite pretty. So the violin sounds like this. So obviously to get the most expression out of it, you wanna turn the mod wheel all the way up and keep it near the upper range here because this is where the sound really opens up and you get to play around with the modulation um, to really get the most human-like performance possible. But um, again, I would just keep it near the 80% to 100% range. So really, really nice vibrato. And the legato is amazing too, because uh, not only are the transitions perfectly balanced, but um, they're, they're adaptive. So you can actually hear the transition shorten as you play quicker. And so um, it gives you a really realistic performance and the legato transitions don't always stay the exact same, right? So it's really, really nice. And it comes with just a mix mic position by default, which is really cool because you don't have to fiddle with any mic positions, especially if you know you don't like to do that anyway. And then we have the solo cello. So obviously you lack a little bit of customization, but this allows you to focus on the performance itself um, and you know limit the tweaking to as little as possible. Really, really pretty sound. Um, we've already talked about the flatano strings, and then we have the whole ensemble there. And you know, here we just have the singles patches, but essentially that's pretty much it. So 
you have a wealth of articulations and, uh, um, sorry, I should, I should say a wealth of content here in terms of the instruments they provide you and the actual combos of stuff that they, they have on offer here. So, you know, when you buy into their, their single libraries, you can tweak as much as you want and the options there are pretty much limitless. But when you buy these Inspire libraries, their goal is simply really to give you an out of the box experience that will allow you to compose very quickly, easily, and give you the best sound quality possible, right? So, um, with, you know, with dedicated libraries like these, Inspire 2, with an aim like it does to be soft and emotional and, you know, that, that kind of thing, this is really, really good for that. And so with just this library alone, you can create a lot of pieces, uh, that sound atmospheric and emotional and soft and all that. So yeah, that's pretty much it guys. I, I hope you enjoyed this casual walkthrough of the library. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I think this library definitely complements the first one really well. If you have both, then your, you know, your starting point would be excellent. So like, let's say you have a whole bunch of other libraries from other developers like Spitfire or ATR or whatever, and you just have these two from orchestral tools, you already have a wealth of content from uh, their Berlin series and their Metropolis Art series. Who knows if they'll make a third? They probably will. <laughs> and I'm going to guess it's uh, based on the upbeat and exciting side of scoring. Um, but yeah, that, that's pretty much it. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and until the next time, I'll see you later.